Well, consumers are looking for value and making changes where needed in their consumption choices. Several restaurant operators in this earnings season noting trade downs among diners in their most recent quarters. Joining now to discuss how consumers are adjusting their meal choices amid current recession fears is Kevin Hockman. He's Brinker International CEO, Yahoo Finance's executive uh, editor, Brian Sazi, joining us as well. Kevin, it's good to see you. And I know you guys are quite focused on value there at Brinker uh, among your different chains. Um, talk to me about what you're seeing among consumers right now. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on. Uh, you know, we just completed uh, uh, a great quarter where we uh, beat the top line and the bottom line. You know, a big driver of that was um, uh, comp store sales growth. So we were, you know, plus 10% for the company. Uh, Maggiano's was plus 21 and uh, Chili's was plus 10. And what we're seeing is uh, we're still seeing actually a pretty healthy uh, customer. We're seeing what everybody else is seeing in the industry, but we're not seeing that at Chili's uh, as of yet. So we had some pretty good mix gains. We've had some pricing. Um, we saw some traffic increases at Maggiano's. And uh, so, so far right now, the customer is, um, is really hanging in there. Uh, but, you know, we're obviously watching what everybody else is too. Kevin, Brian here. Good to see you. We've seen a lot of, uh, we've been talking to a lot of restaurant executives and they're, they're seeing consumers pull back on how many items they put on the table. So maybe they go in there and buy a, a full dinner, but don't get the dessert. Are you seeing that? Yeah, we haven't seen that so far, but we've also had a lot of changes in our business. So um, we've been, you know, much more deliberate about advertising value outside of the restaurant, but inside the restaurant, uh, providing some new innovation to give customers more things to, to buy. So, you know, we have some innovations coming now in um, uh, skinny margarita, a uh, super premium Casamigos margarita. Um, we're relaunching our entire crispers line, which is our chicken tenders line, which we expect will uh, drive both um, uh, dollars of that business as well as bigger baskets. So, you know, while um, I understand what's going on in the industry, and we saw that about a year ago um, when gas prices hit uh, back in the summer, uh, but we really have not seen that in the last six months. So we're going to keep our eye very closely on it. And then separately, we're going to make sure we have that very, very attractive price point, our 1099 three for me meal, uh, which we think is unbeatable value in the industry. Kevin, you had me at margarita, but I, I am also wondering that during times of any type of kind of economic or spending pullback, where consumers will typically perhaps trade down in their ticket that they're paying for any of the, the experiences in the dining restaurants that you operate? Yeah, the way we think about it is that there are some guests that are only going to be able to afford so much. So we're always going to have our margarita of the month. So this time I brought it for Brian. So we've got our uh, $6 um, margarita of the month, the 1800 steak, steak hay. Uh, it's only $6 and it's incredible. So, you you know, I have the description here. I just want to make sure you hear it. It's got 1800 reposada tequila. It's got mon and coconut, pineapple and fresh sour. And at six bucks, it's completely unbeatable. And then we also have our three for me menu for those guests that only have a certain amount of money, but want to have a complete meal. And when I say a complete meal, I'm talking about, uh, you know, almost a half pound burger, uh, and limited chips and salsa and a bottomless drink. So as long as we have those things in the restaurant for that guest that really wants that, and then we innovate on things like a Casamigos margarita and other premium items, I think we're going to be okay. That barbell strategy, I think, will serve as well. Kevin, you just gave me a flashback to when I had endless margaritas at Chili's uh, back in college. I think I still have the shaker. So a picture <laughs> to come after this segment. But you made up a, you bring up a good point on a half a pound burger. So I, I see you selling a lot of those. It is a big burger. I've eaten it before. But then I see what you're doing, or I see the sales over at Maggiano's, that was a very big quarter. Is it just that consumers are want these larger portion sizes and they want more bang for their buck? So that's what you're giving them? Yeah, certainly abundant value is really important. You know, uh, customers are smart. You know, our guests come in and, and they don't want to get mickled and dived. And so, you know, sometimes you see things that are lower price points on a menu, but then you got to buy this extra, you got to buy that extra. And when you offer complete meals at very attractive price points, um, you know, guests know when they're getting a fair deal and they're getting abundant quality. So, um, you know, that's where we're headed. You know, Maggiano's had an incredible quarter. Banquets are coming back. Um, the off-premise business is very sticky. So 25% of the business now is an off-premise. You know, big congratulations to the president there, Steve Provost. He just had his 14-year anniversary. He's doing an incredible job with the team. And uh, Larry, his chief concept officer, that whole team is doing a phenomenal job. Um and Kevin, when we talk about pricing, we've been talking to so many people about pricing over this earnings season. One of the things that stood out to me from the call is that you're not necessarily raising prices on existing items. It's that when you come out with these new items, that's when you have the opportunity to take price. What can we expect over the course of the year in terms of some of those new products at maybe a little bit of a higher price point? And, and how far do you think you can sort of push that? 
Yeah. So once again, as long as we have our barbell strategy, where we're, we're making sure that we have items uh, for all guests um, who want, you know, want to come, come to casual dining or come to Chili's, protect that. But then we can start innovating. So in the Casa Amigos margarita I talked about, we're also going to introduce a skinny margarita, um, which has got Termana Blanco, which is a premium uh, tequila uh, from the from Rocks brand. And we think, you know, having those items where the customer is willing to pay up for because it's a benefit space that they really want. Um, that's a great way to continue to drive pricing. We always had to continue to protect against inflation. And I think we've done a good job of that so far. And, you know, we'll continue to do that. But I think a lot of the pricing that you'll see in the business will come either behind bigger sizes or more premium products like you talked about. And to what extent wages as well from what you're hearing from associates, workers within the, the restaurant experiences that are making sure that Brian stays longer and takes on more of the- No more Ellis margaritas, Brian. Margarita no more, those days are done. They're done. <laughs> Yeah, you know, our team members, um, they are really appreciating the changes that we've made in the, in the restaurant. So the last 12 months, we've really been embarked on simplifying the heart of the house and the front of the house so that our team members can spend more time with the guests, making great food. And we're seeing it in all our scores. So food great, intent to return, um, server attentiveness, guests experience a problem. They're all at, uh, at highs um, well higher than anything um, uh, since the pandemic started. And we're also seeing turnover come down because of those changes that we're making. And so when the guests are having a good time and the team members are having a good time, that's when we see intent to return and repeat rates go up. And I feel like we're on that trajectory. And I think if you talk to our folks in the field, when you go to a Chili's, they feel the same thing. Kevin, I've seen a lot of different iterations uh, of Chili's through the years. Of course, uh, the rib commercials, but I've seen a lot of other food put on that menu. What is Chili's today? Who should they stand for? Yeah, well, so our positioning is what we were when Chili's was founded. So uh, it was a place that you could come and uh, you, you have great drinks, you have great food on some core items like burgers and fajitas um, and chicken crispers, uh, margarita, cold beer, and do it in a fun and friendly atmosphere with great service. And we're, that's what we're about. We're getting back to that. We've had town halls all across the country with all of our management. Um, and the idea was we're getting back to being what Chili's was when we were at our best, which is exactly the things I talked about. And, uh, you know, as long as we focus on those things, burgers, crispers, margaritas, fajitas, we do them really well in a fun and inviting atmosphere. We're going to continue to win. I, you know, I think that is our unique uh, position in the marketplace when we started, and it's going to be our unique position in the marketplace going forward. Our team happy hours are usually at a, usually at a very controversial local watering hole, so maybe we'll have to switch <laughs> that to Chili's in the future. Kevin Hockman, Brinker International CEO, thanks so much for taking the time here today. Thank you, Brad. And no controversy at Chili's, just amazing margaritas. And make sure you come <laughs> this guy's on Mother's Day. We know it. With the Terramanas in the pour, we know it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kevin. Thanks, guys.